Daniel Andrews has extended Victoria's state of emergency by weeks. Let's have a look. Hello everyone, Florian Heiser here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Grab your stein of coffee and let's have a look at, well, this new extension to the state of emergency and state of disaster in Victoria. Things can only go from bad to worse. So this was released today. So, extra testing requirements as we move to COVID normal. COVID normal. So no longer normal. We're not going back to normal. We're going to COVID normal. Now, I noticed just before, and I've shared it on the community tab, that Sky News, they're starting to discuss the Great Reset to bring it into the mainstream media and to expose people to this concept, which, frankly, sounds quite shocking. So it's good, good to see that there's more, ex more well, discussion about these type of things. But I still hate the term COVID normal. We want to get back to normal. Yeah, so close contacts of people with coronavirus will be asked to get tested on day 11 of quarantine to help reduce the spread of the virus as we step up preparations for regional Victoria. From 11.59 tonight, those identified as close contacts by the Department of Health and Human Services must get tested on day 11 or thereafter of their quarantine period, or they will have their quarantine extended. So mandatory testing, if you are identified as just a close contact, just a close contact. So you don't have to have the virus. You just have to be closely in contact with someone. You don't have to show any symptoms. You just have to have been closely in contact with someone. Wow, aren't you all glad you installed that app there, guys, and let them track you? And I'm, oh, Getting tested on day 11 of quarantine helps accurately identify whether it is safe for the close contact to be released from quarantine without the risk of infecting other people. If the test is negative, the person will receive a notice of clearance from the department like on any like, like the on or after day 14, if the test is positive, the department will contact the person with further advice. Well, what about if there was a mistake in the test? Is the government going to compensate you for lost revenue? Oh, who are we kidding? Of course, they're not going to compensate you for lost revenue or lost income or mental suffering. No, no, no. Not in Dictator Dan's uh, nation. In the limited circumstances where a close contact does not agree to take the test... They will remain in quarantine for a total of 24 days from their last exposure to the virus to ensure public health and safety is maintained. 24 days they're going to force people to stay in quarantine if you refuse to take the test. So you can take the test and then you can get away with only a few days of lockdown, only two weeks, or 24 days. Nearly a month in quarantine. What is going on here? This is Australia, everyone. How can we give our leaders this much power? Doesn't this worry you? For something that really is not that big a risk to the majority of humans. Ludicrous, utterly ludicrous. I feel so sorry for the Victorians. And don't think, don't think the same thing couldn't happen in every other state. I think the only reason they're not taking advantage of this here in Queensland is because we've got an election coming up. Often people have coronavirus without any symptoms. Oh boy, it's so dangerous then, no symptoms. And close contacts are one of the highest risk groups for infection. So what? This, this just shows you, this just shows you how utterly ludicrous this whole approach is. We are freaking out, destroying the economy about an illness where <laughs> people don't have any symptoms. They've got no symptoms. Can it really be considered a disease? Can it really be considered a disease if there's no negative impact to it? I mean, let, let me... I'm going to look this up. It's been a while since I did this. Well, since I... Disease. Definition of disease. Okay. So, a distor disorder of structure or function in a human, animal, or plant especially one that produces specific symptoms or that affects a specific location and is not simply a direct result of physical industry. Of physical industry. Physical injury. I can't even read. I probably need my coffee. So, I mean, is it a disease? Techn well, technically being in love is a disease. 
if you look at this, it's a, you know, it's a disorder, it causes a disorder, and you, you know, you, you <laughs> yeah, well, being in love, definitely, definitely puppy love does, you know, I have a shot of coffee to that. Do you think if you're not showing any symptoms, any impl impact at all, could it technically be considered a disease? It's an illness, but that's a different thing. Anyway. Close contacts are identified by the department's contact tracing teams after they determined who a positive case has been in contact with while they were infectious. All, cl uh, all contacts are contacted by the department are required to quarantine at a designated address, undertake the day 11 test, and await formal clearance before being released from quarantine. Couldn't we just have all the people who are working with those at high risk go through this process and everyone else not doesn't worry about it. who cares oh boy people working 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 Hang on. people working in targeted industries who undertake surveillance testing are not required to isolate unless they are feeling unwell or have been directed to quarantine or isolated by the department as we've seen through the pandemic, businesses in regional Victoria are doing, incredibly, are doing incredibly well, keeping detailed records, implementing COVID, COVID safe plans, and encouraging symptomatic staff to get tested straight away. All of these efforts are helping to keep their staff, customers, and communities safe. But as we continue to drive down case numbers, see, it's all about, they're just, they're worried about case numbers. But you need to look at the mortality rate, guys. It is not that low. The number of people that recover from this is insane. $1.1 trillion, everyone. That's how much the federal government has jumped on board for this. I, I hope I live to be old enough so that people will reflect back on this with shock. With shock. And we can say, we can say what it was like just... Oh, the, uh, the utter insanity. Hopefully, we'll still have that freedom. So, today, uh, today, businesses that have currently closed in Melbourne but are open in regional Victoria have been asked to check the addresses of their customers when taking bookings. From midnight tonight, this requirement will, ma requirement will be made even stronger with businesses who conscientiously fail to check their customers are not from metro metropolitan Melbourne, face fines of up to $9,913. So they're going to fine you. If, if someone gets out of metropolitan Melbourne, you're harboring, you're harboring a fugitive. You'll be fined. <laughs> Australia, 2020, guys. Okay? Don't think we couldn't, we couldn't degenerate into a... Uh, ludicrous fascist dystopia really fast here and people would line up and love it they would line up and love it oh if the social justice nutters were in charge they would they would they would relish relish putting on the boots this check could be achieved by asking customers to show their driver's license or key pass id regional businesses who do the right thing but are misled by someone intending on breaking the rules, will not be fined under the, cha under the changes. Instead, individuals found deliberately ignoring the restrictions will risk a fine of $1,652. So if you want to remain anonymous, you don't feel like giving your driver's license over to, I don't know, to buy a carton of bloody milk, you could get fined $1,500. Melburnians who are found in regional Victoria without a valid reason face fines of 4957 bucks, Nearly five grand. Bloody hell. This is just... This is insane. We need to make sure that this doesn't happen again. And I'm not talking about an illness. I'm talking about this level of authoritarian rule in our country. If you are, if you are, if you think this is a good thing, if you think this intervention is keeping us safe, why don't you just sit at bloody home and stay away from other people? If you're so sick and weak that you can't handle it, then you need protection. You need isolation. You don't need to lock down and force everyone else to your bloody will. This is just insane. 
I, I feel terrible for the people living there. With these changes, we're giving regional businesses the confidence that they're doing everything they can to keep their staff and customers safe. Oh, bullshit. To ensure current directions can remain in place to protect Victorians, the state of emergency and the state of disaster will also be extended from 11.59pm on the 11th, tonight, until the 8th of November. So they can, they're extending their authoritarian control even longer. Victorian Police continues to enforce the Chief Health Officer's directions and can issue on-the-spot fines for breaches of stay-at-home directions. This includes 1,652 for individuals, 9,913 for businesses. If people can ever get out of Victoria, we're going to see a flood of them getting out of there. I bet you anyone, anyone who values their indep independence or liberty, I bet you if they can, they're going to just bugger off. They're going to get out. Someone in the comments is saying they're, they're selling a lot of real estate here in Queensland to Victorians. Under the directions, people who don't comply could also be taken to court and receive a further fine of up to $20,000. Companies face fines of up to $100,000. Further details on 11-day testing can be found at yada yada yada. And he, here we go. Let's see the quotes from Dictator Dan. Testing co close contacts on day 11 of quarantine is one of a number of important measures we're taking to ensure compliance with our... Oh, sorry. Sorry, I, I misread there. We're taking to limit the spread of coronavirus in Victoria and reduce the risk of further outbreaks. We know regional businesses are doing everything they can to keep their community safe. I mean, this is just propaganda. This is authoritarian propaganda. The health minister... I, I'm just getting, I'm just thinking of what happened in Germany, what happened in Austria. Guys, I was only following orders, they'll say. So this is from the Australian Retailers Association. This is their response to these wonderful measures designed to keep people safe. Today, Premier Dan Andrews announced changes to the testing requirements in place in Victoria. These are outlined below. Beyond these announcements, the ARA, the Australian Retailers Association, is highly disappointed at the Victorian government's failure to confirm October 19 as the reopening date for retail businesses. The businesses are still closed. They're still closed. With most retail businesses now shut... See, why the hell? You've got that idiot in the Greens. I did a video about this the other day. She's prattling on about how the tax cuts are going to, to men. Why isn't she there screaming at the Premier in Victoria for shutting down businesses? Because retailers, they employ a lot of women, majority women. Why isn't she screaming about that? No, she harps on about a tax cut because she's she doesn't understand mathematics. Or she has to. You can't you can't really get to the Senate in Australia without understanding how stupid the arguments she's putting forward are, can you? Well, shit. Maybe you can, or maybe 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 democracy is just this is this is the end game of it, and we're gonna we're gonna devolve into some socialist SJW hellhole, and we're just seeing the first rollout of it here. With most people, with most retail businesses now shut for at least sixty six days straight as a part of the lockdowns, we recognise this is a serious blow to retailers who are expecting to be open next week and and begin preparations for Christmas. Oh, they won't let you have Christmas. They don't know. It's socialists don't like Christmas, guys. You need to have a, a photograph of Dan Andrews up on the wall, you know, and a copy a copy of, of what is it? Uh, oh, I'm, I'm thinking of, of um, oh, Dust Capital, there we go, or something else crazy. We've expressed our strong concerns in the media statement below and will continue to advocate for urgent clarity with the government. The Premier has today announced harsher penalties for businesses. Harsher penalties that don't check the details of people travelling from metropolitan Melbourne to regional Victoria. They, see, what they want to do is they want you to turn them away. They want you to turn them away. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, I can't, I can't have you in here. You know, I, I might get fined. If you don't show me your license, you have to leave. And there'll be people, there'll be people lining up around it, filming it on their on their bloody phones, cheering, clapping. Oh, look at that Karen refusing to show their license. Australia. Australia. 
Today, businesses that are currently closed in Melbourne but are open in regional Victorians in Victoria have been asked to check the address of their customers while take, when taking bookings. The following changes have been announced. From midnight tonight, businesses who uh, conscientiously fail to check their customers are not from metropolitan Melbourne are facing fines of up to 9000 bucks. I mean, come on. Who wants to check someone's license or ID? Regional businesses who do the right thing but are misled by someone intent on breaking the rules will now be fine will not be fined under the changes instead the individuals will be fined. Melburnians who are found in regional Victoria without a valid reason face fines of up to 4957. What if they're going out in the regions? If they're going out in the country, maybe to get some fresh air. The state of emergency and state of disaster will also be extended from 11... You know, oh, we read this. till the 8th of October. Close contacts of people with coronavirus have been asked to get tested on day 11 of quarantine to help reduce the spread of the virus. From 11.59 tonight, those identified as close contact by the Department of Human Services must get tested on day 11 or thereafter of their quarantine period or it'll be extended. So let's have a look. Let's have a look at Johns Hopkins. Let's look at their map. Let's look at their map here to see what... I was updating this every day. I just couldn't keep up with it, to be honest. And it's kind of depressing to talk about the, this virus all the time. But let's have a look at Victoria once it loads up. So we can see here. There we go. So in total, they've had, in Victoria, 20,281 cases in total. Okay, and I'll scroll down here and we can see Australia. Where's Australia on this chart with the total number? We're up here. We were in 20,000 the last time I checked. Oh, there we go. And it's still 27,000. We're still not doing that bad. And if I scroll down on the screen, you can see the, the chart here. See, look. First wave, second wave. Oh, look, it's gone. But what we can do is we can click on a few things here. We can click here on active cases. Click on Victoria. Okay, right now... There are only 253 active cases in all of Victoria. 253. There have been over 19,000 people recover from this bloody thing. 810 have died. Okay. Guys, death is a part of life. If those of you can't handle it, you need to prepare yourself for it. If you haven't had family members that have passed, you need to learn some resilience. If you don't realize that you're going to die one day, you need to start preparing because it's going to happen to all of us one day or another. How many days, how many days would you want? Or, you know, if say, you know, you were going to die, would you want the whole country locked down to give you a few extra months in a bed? I think a lot of people wouldn't. I think a lot of people wouldn't want to see the young people suffer. They wouldn't want to see lives or businesses destroyed. They wouldn't be that selfish. But maybe that's not what this is all about. I mean, look at that there, guys. So don't worry about the total cases going up. Look at the recovery number. Fine. Fine if you leave Melbourne. So they're disappointed with concern. Let's read their media statement here. The ARA is highly disappointed after the Victorian government failed to confirm October 19th as the reopening date for retail businesses. That have been shut for 66 days straight as part of COVID-19 lockdowns. The ARA CEO Paul Zara said high expectations were set for the reopening date by recently announcing a new date of October 19 ahead of the original October 26 date. But today's update from the Victorian Premier has dashed all hopes for that timing. This is a serious blow to Victorian retailers who were led to believe they could open next week and get ready for the Christmas rush. Beyond that, yeah, well, they won't even let you have that Christmas rush. They won't even let you have it. Because, oh no, we've got 200 cases, oh sorry, 253 cases. And only, only 19,218 of the 20,000 people that caught it have recovered. Oh no. Let's look at the incident rates in Victoria here, guys. There you go, 305 per 100,000 people. The fatality rate, 3.99% case fatality rate. And that's only the cases they've, they've identified. I don't think we have testing rates in Australia. No, we don't. I, I, I would hate to be 
in a retail business right now, guys. Beyond the disappointment, we are also gravely concerned by the fact we have not seen any specific plan that will guide retailers through the restart process. I mean, what's what are you bet will happen is that they'll restart it, retailers will spend big to get ready for Christmas, and then they'll slam it back down again. That could, that could be enough to tip someone over the edge. Most retailers have face-to-face -face interaction with their customers, so it is imperative that they have a full understanding of any additional COVID protocols that may be currently being contemplated. And with Christmas 10 weeks away, additional time and planning is also necessary to physically prepare the stores for the critically important holiday trading period. Well, this is where some of them make all their money. The Victorian government has drawn up restart guidelines for different sectors of the economy, like hospitality and tourism, but has only just begun to think about a retail restart plan. This lack of forethought could result in hazardous conditions when the time does come to reopen the retail industry in Victoria. Well, maybe that's what they want. Maybe they want hazardous conditions. Maybe they want to justify future restrictions and lockdowns. Maybe the Premier is enjoying this control. So there we have it, everyone. Emergency, state of emergency has been extended in Victoria and the state of disaster has been extended in Victoria. Some utterly insane fines, some insane restrictions put on regional businesses. They're going to have to check to keep those Melburnians out of their bloody business. Does this sound like Australia at all? As always, let me know your thoughts and opinions, guys. I think you're pretty, uh, my opinion on this is pretty clear. It's just, just the price we are paying, the burden we're putting on future generations, even if they have to inflate it away, they're going to be people that suffer from all of that. Inflation is still a tax we pay everyone. And not everyone is going to, going to go into precious metals or into, in property or into whatever they can to try and mitigate that. You'll still cop a hit. Is that worth it? For what? Not even a thousand people in the country. Millions were never going to cark it here. We don't know the population density. We've got higher vitamin D levels than other parts of the world. Because that's the bonus of getting all that skin cancer here in Australia. I, I don't know anymore. Anyway, reach out to those people you know in Victoria. Just chat to them. Because it, it, it must suck. And I, I really hope Dan gets, out, gets, gets kicked out again. Because if he doesn't, we're going to see a flood of people leave the state. There's going to be people that will hope. that There are people in the comments that are going, oh, he's, you know, he'll never get in again. He's gone. Everyone I talk to. But you've got to realize there are going to be a whole lot of other people on the other side that are cheering this idiot, that are cheering these restrictions, that want to live in an authoritarian regime, that want their leftist, socialist, you know, greeny utopia that would happily step on your neck for just, you know, using a plastic bag. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comments down below. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you're a fan and want to support us, there are a few ways you can. Join us on YouTube or Patreon. Support us using our affiliate links you find down below. Buy a merch from Teespring or Heiser Says. Or use Gold Pass or PayPal. Take care. Have a great day. And watch out for Dictator Dan.